Hi, I'm Ian from Oak and Chain. If you've ever been to my house, our house, you'll notice I have quite a collection of skulls and antlers and jaw bones and tusks and teeth and all kinds of things that came from animals. There's pretty much not a corner of my house, our house, sorry, that doesn't have antlers or horns or something of this nature in it. Now I'll tell you something. I'm not a vegan. I want to be, I'm trying to be, because at the end of the day, I kind of have come to understand in my life journey that unfortunately, meat is murder. Um, this is something I've dabbled in and out of over the years of my life and sometimes succumbed to the desire to eat meat or, or, or meat products or dairy products. But uh, in the last couple of years, I actually had the opportunity, a term I use very loosely, uh, to work as an electrician in agriculture. And uh, I've seen some things, man. I've seen some things um, that really kind of solidified my belief that, you know, maybe eating meat isn't awesome. Maybe killing animals isn't awesome. Uh, here's another one here. Uh, I'll explain this real quickly. As a pagan, uh, I do firmly believe that in my belief system, if you want to call it that, uh, antlers are important as a symbol of protection. Um, I have no problem acquiring these from bastard trophy hunters and putting them around my house and my workspace. I believe that uh, it offers protection. I believe that uh, the deer specifically uh, in, in our belief is one that brings messages and prayers swiftly to the goddess uh, where she lives, where they live. Um, I have here, as you can see, an assortment of other little skulls and bones and things of this nature. Now, first of all, I'll tell you where I get these. Uh, some of these, for example, this raven claw, I actually did find myself. I found this poor raven in northern Germany that had uh, either died of natural causes and then was mostly eaten by some other opportunistic animal or had been killed by some opportunistic animal. Uh, that was something I had prepared myself, thought I prepared myself. Um, most of the bone items that I have copper formed, that is to say, actually literally... Uh, copper plated um, are ones that I found myself most of them I'd say like easily nine tenths uh, having said that uh, moving from rural Germany into the city obviously one of my biggest problems was uh, I, I didn't have the opportunity to find animal skulls anymore and I found a, a source in Belgium uh, a fellow that uh, prepares skulls and bones and whatnot um, to be clear, um, there isn't really a market that I'm aware of, uh, for people to go out and randomly poach wild animals simply to harvest their bones and their skulls. I hope there isn't. Um, to the best of my knowledge, and I'm fairly confident, otherwise I wouldn't pursue this, um, the, the, the individual who, from whom I purchased my skulls and bones, is merely uh, someone who obtains them, they are given to him or he acquires them, and he uh, prepares them. Um, so he's not involved in any way, shape, or form with their, their murder, with their death. Um, a lot of these I have acquired secondhand on essentially like German or Austrian Craigslist. Uh, some of them I have outright stolen. Uh, I've worked in a number of places where trophy hunters have just killed so many animals they have just boxes upon boxes of bones and whatnot i have no problem whatsoever liberating them from someone who feels that uh killing animals is a, an appropriate recreational activity um <clears throat> and there is the debate is to whether or not the use of bones in in art and jewelry and whatnot is ethical or unethical and it's a slippery slope and it is definitely uh, a matter of opinion, of which I'm sure there are several. Uh, my opinion is this. Um, in my own and our own uh, pagan beliefs, 
I firmly believe that they have a deeper spiritual meaning for us. No question. And I would far rather see them in our home or adorning the bodies of fellow pagans that they might draw something spiritual, a connection to nature uh, from their remains um, rather than simply decomposing or being forgotten in some box in some garage somewhere. Uh, I feel that they are much better served as a reminder to us, as a symbol for us, as a ceremonial object for us as pagans. Um, and I do firmly stand by this. I would never, myself, ever uh, murder an animal for its bones or its skull. I would uh, never have any dealings whatsoever with someone who I knew uh, murdered and prepared animals for this purpose, just for commercial sale. I would never have anything to do with that whatsoever. I would like to say that I'm a saint, that I'm perfect, that I've always understood uh, that we have to coexist with nature and be friends with animals and stuff. I am perfect. And, uh, you know, my grandma always used to say there's only one kind of perfect person in this world, and that's a perfect asshole. And I am, I hope neither one of those. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, on my own journey, I've come to realize that and have witnessed myself, not just through YouTube PETA videos and whatnot, but firsthand witnessed the cruelty that animals do endure to serve humans. And it's pretty gross. So is the use of bones and skulls and whatnot in paganism and witchcraft and in, in, in jewelry making talismans, altar objects and whatnot, is it unethical? I don't believe for a second that it is. I think that when we take something like this, for example, big beautiful fox skull, I literally zero to no doubt in my head this was probably a poor fox that was probably killed by a farmer or a hunter. Um, I am quite happy to give it a home to give it a meaning, to reflect upon it, to meditate upon it, to use this the remains of this creature to help me connect to nature and to the goddess. I think there's a lot worse things one could do. And uh, as I continue on my journey, you know, I would love to be able to leave this earth in a place where I said... I reached a point where I was not responsible for the murder of any animal or any creature. Um, nothing would give me greater joy. Uh, super for all those hardcore vegans out there, what not good on you that make it seem so easy and 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 you know, yeah, I I you know, unfortunately, I have met a lot of vegans that are a little bit pretentious and obnoxious. Um, to those of you who are, you're not helping your cause. You're not helping the cause, man. You're just pissing people off. But, you know, for the rest of us who aren't perfect, who are mere mortals, um, yeah, no, uh, I have not brought meat into this house. I don't know how long. Uh, we still have a few dairy products here and now in the house, and, you know, we're, we're trying to kind of keep that to a minimum. But specifically, uh, because I do try and reach a demographic that tends to be health and spirituality and holistically and magically inclined, I, I easily can see this being an issue uh, for a lot of the people I'm trying to reach, which is why I thought it perhaps warranted an explanation. Um, and once again, I'm very firm in my mindset that if you are, a, especially a hardcore vegan or vegetarian and, you know, are a pagan and you are drawn to something like this, like, like in a space very deep and spiritual way and you feel like you can give an object like this a wonderful and meaningful home it's your decision i don't judge anyone on their beliefs and whatnot but if you really feel like you can really do something positive with this i highly encourage highly encourage highly encourage you to do so i mean that i think you're probably doing this poor creature a real service um, by giving something that met quite possibly 
an abrupt or wrongful or premature death a, a greater spiritual meaning, I think there's something wonderful and beautiful about that, and I highly encourage you to do so. And um, yes, yeah, so that's basically that. Um, and I think that there's also a very big and deep cultural background to that. Uh, I think before our ancestors were more keen on the politically, uh, you know, very in vogue, you know, veganism sort of in, in the, in the hipstery kind of cool sense, um, understood like a coexistence, a true and pure, which I unfortunately don't think will exist any longer, a, a really pure and true and, and well intended, uh, coexistence with nature. I, I, I honestly think they had no problem uh, finding bones, remains, and whatnot, and using them for ceremonial purposes in their daily lives. And I think that it's a little bit pretentious for, for some of us to think that we can't still continue to embrace that. And we don't necessarily need to murder animals in order to do it. So aside from that, I'm, I'm giving it a thumbs up. I'm saying in my opinion, it's, it's all okay. It's all good. So... Um, that addresses that. And like I say, it's just a, a topic I really wanted to get into because I have in my previous work absolutely incorporated a lot of bones and claws and tail arms and, and things of that nature. So I wanted to make sure I was being a little, you know, fairly clear on my intentions with that. So that's my, that's my rant on that subject.